Good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to be part of today's lecture. My name is Kajadil, and um, I'm a research associate at Harry Taylor Mill Institute at um, yeah, the Berlin School of Economics and Law. And um, my research, and I'm writing right now, my thesis addresses the question whether technologies reproduce inequalities. So algorithm biases. And we want to talk about that also today with a focus um, on technologies um, at work. So this is Neil. Neil is a cyborg, which basically means like a hybrid of a um, biological organism and a machine and um, he has a technical implant that allows him to see colors through the camera so basically they're translated into sounds so he hears what he sees and he's the first uh, person in the world with an implanted antenna in his skull and also the first cyborg officially recognized by a government. What do I want to say with that? Well, we are all confronted with more and more technologies in our lives, be it banking, shopping, or even in the world of work. And exactly on this uh, field, I would like to set the focus today from a feminist perspective. Feminism can be broadly described as a social and political movement. Historically, feminism has been about equality between women and men. However, it has changed and evolved in recent years, so it also goes beyond uh, the dualism of gender. And in the course of the past decades, different movements have developed, and at the same time, the individual movements have different um, thematical emphasis and approaches. So um, here, for example, we see a picture um, of a woman's liberation march. So um, from a black feminism approach. And what do all um, have this approaches in common is that they um, advocate equality for all people. Um, so that means equality both in the personal environment, um, but also in the public sphere. So uh, within, for example, a family setting, but also at the workplace. Feminist, feminism is thus concerned for social, political, and economic injustice. And when we talk about feminist network policy, we look at the experiences of discrimination that women or people who identify as female are um, affected by in the digital space. And um, that's what we also want to talk about today. And in advance, I would like to give you a short introduction to the term artificial intelligence. Uh, or shortly also AI. Um, it refers to a branch of computer science. Algorithm computer codes are supposed to be programmed in such a way that they're able to solve problems and evolve on their own. This means trying to um, imitate how the human brain works, for example, with artificial neural networks. So, Let's imagine it's 8 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. You've just awoken, scanned the headlights on your phone, responded to an online post, ordered the holiday sweater for your mom and driving to work, listening to some new music on the radio, and then you identify an unfamiliar song. So already in this short period of time, you've used artificial intelligence more than a dozen times. AI is already pervasive in our world and it's making a huge difference in our everyday lives but this is not the AI you've seen in um, sci-fi movies with nervous scientists cracking on keyboards attempting to hold machines from destroying the world um, you're using your smartphone your bank and um, yeah on a daily basis and sometimes it's obvious like when you ask Siri for the nearest direction but sometimes um, it's also less obvious when, exa for example, you use the Amazon uh, Echo to make um, purchase 
and it collects the information and then gives you advertisement on behalf of it. So AI is and is going to bring major shifts in society through development, uh, maybe self-driving cars, medical image analysis, and also better medical diagnosis. Um, it will be the backbone of many of the most innovative apps and services of tomorrow, but for many, it remains mysterious. To understand artificial intelligence, we have to start with humans, I mean, the brain. Um, in order for humans to be able to learn and think abstractly or draw conclusions, around 85 billion nerve cells, known as neurons, are in the constant use around the clock in our brain. And they fire electrical impulses and form tens of thousands of connection to their neighboring cells. To generate artificial intelligence, a system should therefore also imitate the functioning and structure of the neuron network in the brain. At the moment, research is still far from understanding the human brain 100% and let alone replicating it artificially. And there are three different forms of AI, weak AI, strong AI, and artificial super intelligence. What we generally refer to AI at the moment is the so-called weak artificial intelligence, which is limited to one subject. Examples uh, from our everyday life are email spam filters or voice recognition like Siri, and um, they're really good in their field, but only in that one. And strong artificial intelligence um, has the same intellectual capabilities as a human brain and can also transfer it to conclusions. Unlike weak AI to another area, it does not yet exist. However, one would like to achieve this through deep learning. Um, in very simplified terms, it works like this. So the artificial neurons are connected to each other via layers and have to learn. For example, when you um, recognize um, people in pictures, you probably notice sometimes when you're on a website and you have to choose a car or a traffic light. This is also by this, you kind of help to develop the AI. And... Um, it is a very cheap method for companies to train their AI, actually. And in this learning phase, the system is then told whether it has correctly assigned an image or not. And depending on the feedback, the network changes and the connections between these neurons. And those uh, who were correct become stronger and vice versa. And after many, many trials, the neural network becomes intelligent and continues to develop, develop independently. Deep learning is already yeah, revolutionizing uh, many areas, um, for example, in um, uh, medical diagnosis. Um, there is a study that showed that AI can um, diagnose much better um, breast cancer than humans, than doctors. Um, but what I want to claim is that um, technologies are based on imitation. And this imitation means that they're also imitate, or I call it in my thesis, mimic um, also stereotypes and prejudice. And finally, biases. So uh, let's have a look at these terms. What is the difference between these three terms, prejudice, discrimination, and stereotype? Well, stereotype have something to do with our perception. So is a cognitive part. Prejudice can then have an affective nature. So they cause emotions which can then lead to behavior as in discrimination. So if we take gender for an example, um, we can see here what happens. This is um, an example of an image recognition. And although clearly you can see a bold man on the fourth picture, um, the AI was fed with a lot of pictures from women in the kitchen. So when it saw the background, the kitchen, it automatically 
automatically concluded that it must be a woman. Here is another example uh, from the UNESCO report that I can highly recommend. It's called a blush if I could. And you see that uh, the title is based because you can see the statement on the left side. And then there was the statement, you're a slut and Siri would answer, I would blush if I could. And, um, or to the statement, you're a naughty girl. The answer was, hmm, I just don't get this whole gender thing. Siri has changed now. Um, if you have um, a Siri, you can change and try it out uh, later and let me know. Uh, I've tried it after reading this and uh, read that they have changed the statement after this report. So basically, when we talk about stereotype and prejudices, this can have like a huge impact um, also at work as gender related attributions and the world of work have always been interdependent. And this is then also transferred into the technologies. So for example, studies show that digital platforms show better paying job postings to men, while people that are marked as female don't see jobs in the technical area. And there's, also another example, which is referred to a lot. So basically Amazon introduced a uh, hiring software um, that was um, meant to rank the application that came in. Um, however, it came out that the application robot discriminated against women, but not intentionally, um, because what happened was that it um works on the on the data that it was fed and in amazon's case the system focused on the type of applicant who applied to the company most often tech savvy man and the software assumed that these people will be particularly interested in the employer the problem is that there are more men than women in the tech industry so the woman the robot concluded that primarily men are more enthusiastic about the company and tended to filter out women Another example is the algorithm of the Austrian labor market service, which estimates that uh, which estimates the integration prospects, um, and it showed that um, the algorithm rated women and people without European citizenship, um, yeah, worse chances on the labor market than for men. So uh, the algorithm is designed to predict job seekers' chances of finding their way back into the labor market within a certain period of time. And to do this, a company trained the system with data from previous years, such as uh, age, gender, place of residence, previous career, uh, nationality. And based on this data, the system makes a prediction as to whether a person's chances of re-entering the work force in the near future are high, medium, or low. Um, it does turns an individual into a yeah, kind of statistical probability. And the system is intended to serve as a support for counselors, um, some of whom have only short time to make a decision uh, on whether to support a, jack, a job seeker with further training. So a lot of uh, civil organizations and scientists have criticized the system because it was introduced without public debate and openly discriminates against groups that have already been discriminated in the job market in the past. Um, so women, for example, received per se a point deduction. And if their mother for the mother, if they were mothers, further points were deducted. So you can see how controversial this algorithm is, but it's still being used. This is also another example um, which shows uh, from a software that was analyzing uh, job interviews recorded on video. And they found that, for example, when you were wearing glasses, 
uh, you would have better a better rating, but also factors like lights um, uh, or like, yeah, the external experience like glasses and, and headscarf has also changed, um, yeah, the scoring of the candidates. So such output of an algorithm can have different causes. Um, a simple explanation would be that, yeah, the prejudice of the programmers would have find their way into design of the algorithm, but it's also possible that the data, the training data, um, is already biased. So obviously the output of it would be also biased. Finally, it is important to note that only 12% of leading researchers in the field of um, learning machines are women, but you also have to take an intersectional approach. So this is another example that shows that image recognition um, can not recognize um, a black woman. And that shows also that not only it is um, a behalf on gender, but also on ethnicity. So it's important that um, yeah, the developers behind these technologies um, are also diverse and represent different group and individuals. So at the end, we do not have to worry that uh, a robot will conquer the world at the moment, but uh, rather how technologies impact our lives and influence us, especially also marginalized groups and in terms of discrimination. Finally, it is important to note that technology is not developed in a vacuum and uh, it is socially produced and it has also effect on its society. So that's why we need an interdisciplinary approach. We need different advocates, different voices when developing these technologies, when using these technologies, when evaluate these technologies. And um, it is in the first place also important to attract different groups, um, not only women, uh, but especially marginalized groups in the field of um, STM. All right, thank you very much. And um, I'm here for questions and comments.